This was quite an experience for me. A short experience, but an experience nonetheless. Immediately, the second you boot up this game, you can see the animation and the 3D models here look like some really bad clay motion graphics. And that's really weird since this PlayStation 2 game actually looks worse than the PlayStation 1 counterparts to this game. How do you even end up with something that looks worse on a newer generation? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And while we're on the topic of things not making any sense, the story of this game is set pretty much immediately after Year of the Dragon, and Ripto comes back. You remember Ripto from Ripto's Rage, or Gateway to Glimmer, depending on where you live? Well, he's alive and back, and he's got the same two dinosaur minions with him. I'm pretty sure we killed at least those two, if not Ripto too. But hey, what do I know? Let's go with this. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I'll accept it. We've got Ripto as the villain here. And Ripto tries to capture all the dragonflies, but he just kind of teleports them randomly throughout the entire world. And now you have to go find all of those dragonflies, which you, in Year of the Dragon, had to find eggs. And before that, you had to find orbs. Well, from orbs to eggs, we got names. And now, well, dragonflies also got names, but now, for some reason, somebody in the development team figured we've got to make Spyro say every single maim of every single dragonfly he finds and for some reason somebody higher up in the company thought that was a cute idea hey it's bubbles hey it's g Steffi, shellac rashomon tojimbo also all the dragonflies includes sparks's disappearance and you might think oh my god we're playing a spiral dragon game without sparks and probably like we have to go through the tutorial to find sparks because that would be a very nice and intelligent way of designing a game with interweaving with the story and stuff but literally the cutscene where sparks disappear ends you get a loading screen and then you get into a cutscene where you find sparks literally around the corner why and then you get into your first loading screen and these loading screens will make up a good portion of your gameplay time in this game because these loading screens can take very, very, very long. The game doesn't waste any time though, I mean, other than on the loading screens, and it immediately throws something new at you. A rune which you have to go to some kind of like statue to put a rune in to get a new ability. This ability is Bubble Breath and it allows you to collect the dragonflies, because unlike dragon eggs, dragonflies can actually, well, just move around, so you need to capture them in your bubble breath. That's not to say that that's the only way to get them, of course, there's still prizes for side quests like the orbs were and the dragon eggs were. They're pretty much exactly the same, but these ones can run around and you have to capture them, which honestly that is an improvement on the eggs, because the eggs were just laying around and so were the orbs, so a little bit at a time it's getting more and more complicated and I do approve of that, because you need to keep the formula fresh and exciting, but at the same time Doing that implies that you think your player base already knows the previous games, especially since you pretty much have all the power-ups of the previous games where you had to unlock those power-ups right from the get-go again. So that would imply you make this game for people that know what they're doing, right? At the same time though, this game tutorializes literally everything. It even gives you a quick tutorial when you get close to your first gem about how to pick up gems. And I want to talk about gems for a quick second. The engine of Sparks picking up Dragon Axe is way more responsive and I think the reach on it is also a little bit longer. So that has improved quite a bit and I do really love it. The reason picking up gems might be easier as well though is because Spyro moves a hell of a lot slower. And that's not just talking about the abysmal frame rate this entire game runs at. Anywhere from like 10 to sometimes if you're lucky 30 frames per second no actual like movement speed of spyro is way lower than in any previous game and while that wouldn't be necessarily a bad thing the levels themselves are way more big because we're on the playstation 2 we need to use this processing power for something that the playstation 2 can't 
handle, apparently, because this game, again, runs at abysmal frame rates. And it's not, I repeat, not because the game looks good at all. I mean, there's games on the PlayStation 2 that look way infinitely better, which run at 30 frames per second, or sometimes maybe even 60 if you're very lucky. But this, this doesn't even hit 30 and looks abysmal. There's no excuse for this game to look and run so bad at the same time. Which is a real shame, because that's pretty much the only thing holding me back from liking this game, because a lot of minute improvements like the Sparks engine for picking up gems has improved, a couple of new breaths, you do get a bubble breath, but you also get lightning breath and ice breath, and you get a rune for a wing shield, which then protects you against enemies' projectiles and all that kind of good stuff. It really has its heart in the right place, but it's just mechanically so goddamn broken. For instance, the flame breath has a little bit of longer reach, but mostly it has a wider reach than it had before, which is really, it just feels right and it feels natural. And I like this flame breath any day over the original trilogy flame breath. It's just a shame it's in such a bad game. I mean, for fuck's sake, at one point, Spyro just stopped animating. He just became a 3D model moving through space. I don't know how I did this, I don't know why it did this, but it shouldn't. That's clear enough, I think. It's clear that the people making this game had way too few resources to make this game, because I think their minds and their hearts were in the right places, but they just couldn't do what they wanted to do. For instance, Moneybags was supposed to be a part of this game, and he shows up once in the first stage, and after that you never see him again. The only part of the game I genuinely enjoyed throughout my short playthrough, and we'll get to why it was so short in a second, most of you guys probably already have a good hunch as to why, was going through the speedway. You still get your time attack and your races on your speedway, and they actually work. The one I went through in the first stage, it actually just runs nicely, it controls nicely, everything about it is just nice. So now, I played about an hour of this game, and most of that was the first stage, because I wanted to play as much as I possibly could. And then, in that first stage, you already get the electric breath ability, so... Then I go to this gate and open it, and you can actually glitch through this gate if you know what you're doing. I couldn't succeed because it relies on lagging out the game a little bit, and it wouldn't do that for me. Maybe it's because I've got a PlayStation 2, like, slim version. I don't know why it didn't do it for me. I couldn't glitch through the gate, so I went through the first level and opened the gate like you're supposed to with your new electric breath. Then you get to this little beach part, and here is where you can do the infamous swimming in the air glitch. Spyro 2 had it, Spyro 3 had it, and this also definitely has it. But the biggest difference here is that there's no separate hub world, so it's just one hub world with a few levels in it, and I believe there's just nine levels in the entire game. The levels themselves are pretty big, but that is a hell of a lot less than anything that came before it. And because it's just one overworld, if you can do the swimming in the air glitch in the overworld, you can get out of bounds. And if you're out of bounds and you can swim around freely, you can easily get to the teleport zone to the final boss. So if you manage to glitch through the gate, you can get into the final boss within like five minutes of starting the game. It took me about an hour because I was just playing around in the first stage. And I went through a couple of loading screens, so that's about like 10 minutes of my time gone as well. And then you get to the final boss, and he's laughably easy. He starts by putting up a shield, which you can easily annihilate, and then you just have to hit him a couple of times. This game introduces a couple of different breath abilities, and you don't use any of them except for your default fire breath in the final boss fights. You see... This entire glitch could have been solved if you need all of the breaths to finish the final boss fight. For instance, you start off in a fire breath, and then you need to electrocute him with your electric breath, and then freeze him, and then you need to hit back projectiles using your wing shields. And then finally, to finish him off, you capture him in your bubble breath, and he drops down into the lava or something. I don't know, but it isn't that difficult to think of something to make sure people actually play the game before glitching into the final boss level. Because people glitch into the final boss level within five minutes. I genuinely wanted to play the rest of this game after I did this glitch. I just wanted to do this glitch to show it to you, and then this happened. 
legitimately, I can't play PlayStation 2 games anymore on this PS2. It's not because this game broke my PS2, but it just happened to break at the same time as me playing this game. So I'm very happy that I went through the final boss and defeated it. I got about an hour in this game and that's it. But no PlayStation 2 game for me anytime soon on this channel, I guess. It's a, it's a real shame because I was honestly, like I said, I was honestly planning to play this entire game. As horrible as it is, I wanted to play it and now I can't. So I'm making this video a little bit incomplete. At some point, I will return to this game when I've got a new PlayStation 2 and I'm sure that I can play it. But for the time being, I would advise any and all of you to either stay away from this game if you want to play a good game or go get this game. If you just want to mess about and just glitch the game and, and see what all the fuss is about because this game is notorious. It's almost Sonic 06 levels of notorious for being a buggy mass. It's fun to play around with. It's not a good game though.